church. We are now halfway through our 30 days of prayer and I have been really enjoying getting to pray with each other on Monday nights on Zoom and just spending time with God um, in prayer throughout the week. It's been really great to focus on that. This morning, Pastor Ian's going to be preaching about prayer and how we can be honest with ourselves in prayer. So I'm really looking forward to hearing what he has to share with us. I hope you have a really great week and I hope you enjoy this morning's program. For me, some of the barriers in sharing faith. In the current situation, uh, opportunity to share the faith is one of the biggest challenges. Because we live in like a post-Christian world now. At workplace, usually they, they don't believe there is God. So it's hard to, to start the, the conversations. Fear, uh, it's the unknown of what other people may say. It's difficult sometimes going online, you have all these different opinions based on our beliefs. I think it gets that confusing at times. One barrier I see for others sharing their faith is not really knowing where to start. You know, something where you can come and, you know, st at least have a starting point of sharing your faith. And I think that'd be very useful to be able to find all your resources in one app where you've got all your different topics. If you had a, an app where you could help yourself be able to explain what you believe and what you stand for. Oh, you know, how do others do these things? Having like that kind of, you know, digital marketplace is super beneficial. Um, whittling down the exact resources that you need. Sometimes you don't know where to, which platforms to look, look on. For me, resources are a means to an end, so they can help me bridge the gap uh, in starting a conversation with somebody. What would help me, and I'm sure countless others, is if there was say a catalogue of resources, you could just go and you could search and find what you're looking for. A recent survey revealed that 90% of church members would love an app where they can find quality evangelistic resources to share with their friends and family. In response to this need, the South Pacific Division has decided to create a new sharing app. This new platform aims to do three things. Encourage members spiritually, give personal evangelism tips and training, as well as provide quality shareable resources and Bible study guides. Having access to this new platform will give you the tools you need to run a Bible study, post spiritual videos, and share Jesus with those that are in your area and your sphere of influence. We're really excited about what the future holds and we aim to have the first version of this app complete by this time next year. Our goal is to help you share Jesus simply and effectively with others. Please give generous. Dear God, our hearts are broken for this world. The hatred is palpable, the division undeniable, and the pain runs deep. We desperately need more of you. We ask for your truth to be louder than the noise which surrounds us. For your mercy to be stronger than the voices of oppression. For your strength to overpower those who seek to do harm. Where there is division, bring unity. Where there is anger, bring peace. Where there is evil, bring victory. Empower us to fulfill your mission, to answer your calling, to be the light you've created us to be. May your love, your grace, and your mercy flood this world. We love you, we seek you. We place our hope in the mighty name of Jesus. This we pray. Good morning, Haven Church, and welcome to another Haven Campus Online. <laughs> we are into our, our second week of our prayer series. And I'm excited to share with you what God has impressed on my heart today. But before I go into today's talk, I just want to just acknowledge that though we've been doing this for, I, imagine, I believe, a little over a month now, 
Though we've been doing this week in and week out, I still find it hard to come to terms with the reality that we find ourselves in. I can't, I will never get used to speaking to just the camera. And every time, every week I find myself here, I'm reminded of the fact of how much I miss being in community with you. So Haven Church, I just want to simply let you know that you are immensely missed and I cannot wait to be back face to face and in person. And before I go any further, let me just have a word of prayer with you and we'll go into today's talk. Let's pray. Father God, I just want to thank you for this time. I want to thank you for this church, this community. I want to thank you for your word. And I pray, Lord, that as we seek you, I pray, Lord, that you speak to our hearts and our minds. And may we come to know that you are God and that you love us. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. We're going to start our reading in the book of John chapter 11, verse 17. John chapter 11, verse 17. And before I start, I want to give you a bit of a recap on what has taken place at the start of chapter 11, leading into verse 17. So we read at the start of chapter 11 that Jesus has just received news that his friend, his dear friend, Lazarus, has become very, very ill. And when he receives news, the Bible says that instead of making his way straight to, to Bethany, where Mary, Martha and Lazarus were, that he remains in Jerusalem for a further two days. And only after remaining in Jerusalem for a further two days, only then does he begin with the, in his journey to Bethany. And it's in this journey that we pick up in John chapter 11, verse 17, and we read, On his arrival, on his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in their loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would, have, would not have died. But I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. It was common practice and it was quite popular within the Jewish culture that after you had finished burying your loved ones, that after the burial, you would follow with seven days of mourning. And it was in that seven days of mourning that the townspeople would come around you and they would cry with you. They would sympathize with you and they would comfort you specifically in that seven days. And it's because of this, it's within this practice that Jesus makes his approach. And we read that after four days of being in the tomb, the, towns, the townspeople had made, made their way to Mary and Martha and they were comforting them. And while they were around the house, news had spread and reached Martha's ear that Jesus had just arrived that Jesus had just made his approach. And once she had heard this, she makes her way over to Jesus. She couldn't wait, but she decides to make her way over to, the Jesus, to Jesus. And it's in her plea and in her prayer that I want to highlight two points, two critical points that I find in Mary's prayer and her plea to Jesus. And the first point is found in the very first word, Lord. And in, it's in this word we discover and acknowledge that Martha, though she is struggling with coming to terms 
in losing her brother. That when she runs over to Jesus and she meets Jesus, she cries out, Lord. And we learn that in the cry out to Lord, she is acknowledging in her heart of hearts, in her soul and her mind, that regardless of the pain that she's experiencing, she still declares with her heart that the rabbi, that the Messiah, that the person that she, she's approaching is still Lord. And this is a critical point because it teaches us how important it is for us to come to terms with, regardless of our circumstances, regardless of our situation, of the pain we, are, we go through in life, that God is still our God. And it is critical that we know in our hearts that regardless of the evidence or regardless of what our circumstances may be speaking to us, the love of God does not change and He will always remain a good, good and loving God. And we read about this last week of the importance of knowing God and by only by experiencing and journeying and beginning a relationship, we will come to terms with who God is. About all the things that we read in Scripture of Him being a good God, a merciful God, a loving God, a kind God. But these things are only words until we experience them for ourselves. And we looked at the importance of tasting and experiencing God and for us to come to terms and understand in our hearts that He is still good, regardless of pain, regardless of confusion, regardless of suffering. And here Martha is declaring that with her heart and still acknowledging Jesus as her Lord in saying that I don't know why I'm going through this, I don't understand it, but one thing I do know, that you are my Lord. As a kid, one of the things, one of the songs that I fell in love with quite quickly was the good old hymn, How Great Thou Art. And I remember this song would so often be sung at funerals. And this confused me as a kid because I always would think to myself, why are we singing this song of how great God is while we are in the midst of the darkest moments, while we are actually still bearing someone we care and love? And it's only when I got older and I started my own journey with God and I started my own relationship with God that I came to understand that He is good regardless of my circumstance, regardless of my pain. And I came to understand that regardless of, regardless of the evidence I see around me, He still cares for me. And to this day, I'm able to sing how great thou art even though I can't see the evidence of his love. But I know that he loves me. And I love what Martha does here. In her cry out to Jesus, she addresses him as Lord. Because that's who he is. Point two takes place. That in the middle of her cry, in the middle of her pain, she seeks Jesus. And in stating that, Rabbi, teacher, Lord, if you had only come when I called you, if only you had listened, you would have been here in time and you and, and our brother Lazarus would still be alive. She is being honest and she is being real with God. She is being real with her Messiah. She is being real with her Lord. And we come to terms with the important parts of point two is that we are called to be honest and to be real with our God. 
It took me a long time. It took me a long time to realize that every time Carissa came to me and presented a situation or a circumstance that she, she was struggling with. It took me a long time to realize that every time she cried out to me or explained to me something she was dealing with, it wasn't licensed for me to try find a way to solve her problem. As a male, this is what I try to do. I try to fix every problem that I find. But I had to learn, I had to learn and it took me a long time to learn this lesson that every time Carissa actually came to me and started explaining something to me, it wasn't her telling me, hey, I need you to fix this. But in fact, it was her saying, hey, I need you to listen to this. Us guys can be quite slow in understanding the simple but yet the important things to life. And it takes us guys to learn this, this powerful point that healing does not begin, does not start in the resolving of life's problems. Did you catch that? Healing does not begin in the resolving of life's problem, but healing actually takes place when we begin to pour out our hearts. And when we pour out our hearts, we find that there is a safe place for our hearts to land. And the person that we pour out our hearts to receives us and that we are heard and that we are safe. This is in fact the first stage of healing. And the, the further I journey into this story of Martha, the, first, the, the further I come to understand the importance of the second dimension of prayer. That prayer is in fact for us. When we pour out our hearts to God and we are encouraged to do so, we are encouraged to share our joys as well as our sadness things that make us happy and the things that cause us pain. And the Bible says and encourage us, pour it out to God. And when you do this, healing takes place because you know that your God that you serve is a good God and He cares for your pain. He cares for your concern and He hears it and He journeys with us and He helps us along with it. That's why I love in the book of Philippians when he reads this, Philippians chapter 4 verse 6, he says this, Do not be anxious about anything. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Here scripture is encouraging us to be authentic and to, and to be real with God and to start the healing process in pouring our hearts over to Him and knowing that He is a good God and that He is a safe place for our hearts to land. Healing takes place. Healing begins in the outpouring of our hearts. And we do this in prayer. Prayer is for us. I love it. After Martha has finished in her conversation with Jesus, the Bible says in, in, in verse 28 that as soon as she had finished, she went back into the house. She went back into the house and she seeks out Mary because she knows just, just as, as she is suffering, Mary is suffering. Just as confused as she was, Mary is confused. And she addresses Mary and she says to Mary, Mary, the teacher, the rabbi, our Lord is looking for you. Now go and see him. 
She's looking out for her sister. Because she knows that they are in this together. They are struggling and suffering together. And she wants for Mary to receive healing just like she has received healing from her great Lord. We are in this together. And I, and I love this point because it reminds us that we as a church, when we go through our highs and we go through our lows, we go through it together. And sadly, in the last couple of months, I have seen the devil attack our church directly. And I want to be careful in the words that I use and how I articulate myself, but I, I can't help but see that the devil is at work within our church in trying to create division amongst us. We are, we, are, we are talking amongst ourselves. We are posting on social media. We are, we are in conversation and I hear it amongst them and I hear it even in my home that there, are, there, are, there is divisions created. If it's a division of vaccines or non-vaccines, anti-vaxxers or vaccination, is it, is it a division between our, we need to protest or we need to stay home and be safe or, or, it, or I believe in truth and you believe in conspiracy? I have seen and heard division taking place. And I, and I, and I know that we as a church need to rise above this. Because there will always be points that separate us, points that, don't, that we don't agree in. That will always arise in the church. It has been there ever since I was a kid where I've heard arguments about music. I've heard arguments on vegetarianism. I eat meat or I don't eat meat or I drink coffee or I don't drink coffee or I wear jeans or I, you don't wear jeans. There will always be points that we are divided upon. But we must rise above this and not allow our, our, our arguments or allow our, the points that we don't agree on to divide us. But we should allow and need to allow the things that are bigger than the division to unite us. And that is that we are united under the umbrella of God. We cannot allow our arguments to divide us, but we need to allow God's love to unite us. Because He is bigger than any argument. He is bigger than any understanding or any truth that we may perceive. He is bigger than this and He has called us to be united under His love for Him and for one another. I love it in the Lord's Prayer. How the first word that Jesus utters in the prayer, he says, our Father. Our Father. He is uniting us in this prayer in saying that He is our God and we are His kids and He is our Father. We need to use prayer as a tool to unite us and not allow our differences to separate us. We need to rise above this. Allow God's love to reign louder than any division, any arguments or any understanding. And the truth that we are all His children. So let us Come together, church, as a community, in prayer, in knowing that He is our God, that He loves us, and that we are all His children. Let's pray. Father God, I just, I leave our church at your, at your, ever caring and loving hand 
knowing that in your hand, that is the safest place that we can be. That it is with you we can pour out our hearts and that you receive it and that you are a safe place for them to land. Lord, I cry out that you unite us. Don't allow our differences to separate us, but allow our love for you and one another to unite us. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together, Lord. And may we see you. May we hear you. And fall deeper in love with you as a community. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless.